Do you ever wonder why it's so hard to escape debt in this day and age? It's all thanks to three familiar names. Visa, Amex, and MasterCard. If you use your credit cards, you do not want to be rich. Well, anytime you say something about debt, people send it to me. Look, right, Cuban, look what Cubans say. Tweets, yeah. Look at what Cubans say. Vice versa. Yeah, so so cut, cut up your credit cards. If you use a credit card, you don't, don't want to be want rich. rich. Yep. What if I told you that these credit card giants have been colluding to create a monopoly of debt? What if I told you that they're not just competing for business, but rather they're working together to keep you in a perpetual cycle of debt and interest payments? Today, we're about to dive deep into one of the biggest financial conspiracies in history. And once you see the whole picture, you'll never look at those little plastic cards the same way again. The financial industry is a pretty big place. It's a massive world of numbers, calculations, and rules that most of us don't fully understand. And that's where our story begins. You see, there are three names that dominate the world of credit cards. Visa, Amax, and MasterCard. These companies have become a household name over the years, and they're known for providing us with a convenient way to pay for things without the need for cash. Now, when did all this begin? You see, credit cards weren't always around. In fact, it wasn't until the mid-20th century that credit cards began to appear on the scene. The first credit card was created by a man named Frank McNamara, who came up with the idea while dining out with his friends. He realized he had forgotten his wallet and was forced to call his wife to bring him cash. From that moment on, he knew there had to be a better way. Fast forward a few years and the credit card industry became a boom. Let's start with Visa. Now, Visa has originally been called Bank AmeriCard. It was created in 1958 by Bank of America as a way to offer their customers a way to purchase goods and services without cash. And back in the day, people used to carry around loads of cash just to pay for things. Over time, Bank AmeriCard grew in popularity and spread to other banks around the world. In 1976, it changed its name to Visa, which is short for Visa International Service Association. Today, Visa is one of the most widely used payment methods in the world, with over 3 billion cards in circulation. Yeah. 3 billion cards. Moving on to Amex, or American Express, was founded in 1850 as an express delivery company, delivering packages and valuables across the United States. It wasn't until 1958 that American Express issued its first charge card, which was designed for travel and entertainment expenses. Now the thing is, unlike Visa and MasterCard, American Express is a closed loop network, which means that it both issues and processes its own transactions. This allows Amex to have more control over its transactions and to offer perk and rewards to its customers that other payment methods can't match. And finally, let's talk about MasterCard. MasterCard was founded in 1966 as the Interbank Card Association, or ICA. It wasn't until 1979 that it changed its name to MasterCard. You can say that MasterCard operates similarly to Visa, and banks around the world issue in MasterCard branded cards to their customers. Now, one of the unique things about MasterCard is that it offers a wide range of payment options, including credit, debit, and prepaid cards. This allows customers to choose the payment method that works best for them. Now, these three names rule the whole debt in the world. Yes, let me ask you when the last time you swiped your credit card was. I'm sure it would be very recent. That's how close they are to every household in the world. But have you ever wondered how they got to be so big? Well, let me tell you a little secret. It's all part of the biggest financial conspiracy in history, the monopoly of debt. You see, Visa and MasterCard are both owned by banks, and they work together to create a system where their cards were accepted everywhere. This made it difficult for other companies to enter the market. But that's not the only reason for the success. Credit cards are incredibly profitable. The interest rate charged on unpaid balances can be as high as 25%, and merchants are charged a fee every time they accept a credit card payment. This has led to some criticism of the credit card industry, with many people calling it a monopoly of debt. Now, I know that sounds like a bold claim, but hear me out. You see, credit cards have become an essential part of our daily lives. We use them to pay for everything from groceries to vacations. But have you ever stopped to think about how they actually work? I mean, we know that we swipe the card and the money magically disappears from our account. And what happens behind the scenes is a lot more complicated. Let me explain. When you use a credit card, you are essentially borrowing money from the card issuer, who then charges you interest on the amount you owe. This interest can quickly add up, making it difficult to pay off your debt and leaving you in a cycle of borrowing and paying interest. The fees charged by credit card companies are incredibly high. In fact, they're some of the highest fees in the entire financial industry. And what do the merchants get? Well, they get to offer their customers a convenient way to pay without the need for cash. But here's where things get interesting. 
Credit card companies don't just charge you interest. They also have the power to control your credit limit, your interest rate, and even whether or not you're approved for a card in the first place. This means that credit card companies have a monopoly over your debt, as they're the ones who control how much debt you can have and how much interest you have to pay. It might sound like a conspiracy theory, but the truth is that credit card companies have a real interest in keeping you in debt. After all, the longer you're in debt, the more money they make off of you in interest charges. In fact, credit card companies have been known to use tactics to keep people in debt and maximize their profits. You see, when credit cards first came around, we could make purchases without carrying cash, and we could pay off the balance at the end of the month. But something happened along the way. That's when these tactics and strategies came in. Credit card companies realized that they could make more money by keeping people in debt. First, they offered low introductory interest rates. That eventually skyrocketed after a few months. This means it's easy for people to get into debt and hard for them to get out. Second, credit card companies make it easy to spend more than we can afford. They offer high credit limits and encourage us to make purchases we can't afford to pay off right away. This leads to high interest charges, late fees, and penalties. Third, credit card companies are masters of marketing. They use catchy slogans, flashy advertisements, and rewards programs to lure us into spending more than we should. They make us feel like we're missing out if we don't have the latest rewards card or if we're not using our card to earn points. Now, these are the tricks that we play along with. You might be wondering, why do merchants agree to pay such high fees? Well, it's because they have no other choice. As we said before, Visa, American Express, and MasterCard have formed a monopoly on the credit card industry. They control almost all the credit card transactions made in the world. And because merchants can't afford to turn away customers who want to pay with their credit cards, they're forced to pay the high fees charged by these companies. That's not all. These credit card companies have also formed alliances with big banks, which allows them to control the interest rate charged on credit cards. This means that they can charge high interest rates on the money that people borrow using their credit cards. And because most people don't pay off their credit card balance in full each month, they end up paying a lot of interest to credit card companies. Now, I know this all sounds like a big conspiracy theory, but it's not. It's a fact. The credit card industry has become a massive ground controlled by a few powerful players. And while we may not be able to change things overnight, it's important that we start talking about these issues and understanding how they affect our daily lives. So there you have it, guys. The story of the biggest financial conspiracy in history. Think about it. Every time you use your credit card, you are basically playing into their game. They make money off of you, and they make it off of everyone else, too. It's a never-ending cycle of debt, and they're the ones who hold all the power. But here's the thing, most people don't even realize it. They think they're just using a convenient way to pay for things. But in reality, they're feeding into a system that is rigged against them. So what can we do about it? How can we fight back against these financial giants? Well, that's where the mystery comes in. There are ways to break free from their grasps, take back control of your finances, and start living a debt-free life. But I'm not gonna give it all away just yet. So stay tuned for more updates in our channel. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Do drop the views in the comment section below. We'll catch you in the next episode. Until then, stay tuned.